Hey everyone, uh, a local Sears store was going out of business and had one of these uh, infrared thermometers marked down to 30 bucks. So I've kind of been wanting to take one of these apart for a while uh, just to see exactly what kind of sensor they use. So let's hack into this thing. I've actually already kind of taken it apart. It's an Tech Model IR250 and it's actually built pretty well. Um, pretty solid case. Um, it's all snapped together. The case itself didn't use any fasteners. It was just plastic clips, but it all held together pretty well. This model has a laser pointer on the top and uh, it still should be working. Yes, there's a reading there and uh, it's pretty responsive. So let's take out the circuit board. This all had, these had screws holding this together, which I didn't bother putting back. And there's the actual sensor. So uh, let's zoom in on that and get a closer look. Okay, so here's a look at one side of the board. Uh, you got the trigger switch here. This is an Atmel EE prom. Uh, voltage regulator here. Some discrete transistors. I believe these turn on and off the laser and the backlight. And the actual sensor itself. This is a full analog part. Some of these sensors actually have digital conditioning circuitry in them, and they can be uh, queried for data over a digital serial line. But this one is actually full analog. The only number on it is 3161, which I you know, spent a long time searching for on the internet and eventually found out it is a Perkin-Elmer part, and the actual part number is TPS334. For some reason, 3161 is either like a you know, an OEM code or something, I don't know, but it basically is the same part. And it has a little window here to prevent uh, visible light from getting in there. So the window is silicon or germanium or something, so that only long wave infrared can get inside there. Now the, the type of signal that this part produces is a really, really low voltage level. It has four pins. One pin is uh, ground, one pin is a thermo, uh, a thermistor. Inside there, there's also a plain old thermistor. And the other two pins are the output from the thermopile, which is measured in microvolts. I think the full scale range on that is like one or two millivolts. So after realizing that this thing only outputs a signal of one millivolt, I started looking around on this board for an op amp because you need something to amplify that signal. So let me uh, turn it over. And I'll, I'll unscrew the display here so that we can see what's on the other side of the board. Okay, so the LCD lifts off, and there's one of these, I think they're called zebra stripe, or some kind of a conductive, it's basically like a, a polymer with a bunch of conductive bands to uh, connect the LCD up. Surprisingly, there's no discrete uh, op amp on here. There's a, a chip hiding under this blob of potting material, which I assume has to be a microcontroller, which is, which is interfacing with the EEPROM over here. Um, but yeah, what's the deal with no uh, op amp? So I'm guessing that they have a specialized chip in here that has analog front end circuitry on it in addition to microcontroller. Or it could be two actual dies on here, but that, that I don't think so. There's probably just one under here. You'll also notice they very nicely labeled this little header connector here and also labeled this top thing Cal. I've played with some of these pins, and they're, they're actually not that exciting. The pins in here, you know, it's got ground and voltage and a reset, probably for the microcontroller. And these other pins just monitor the, the uh, like whether the trigger switches down or up, or whether the buttons over here are down or up. I didn't really see very much exciting going on in there. So my ultimate goal here in taking this apart was to see if I could use this sensor and hopefully the analog conditioning circuitry in here to make my own temperature measurements or to get an analog, a usable analog signal out. Uh, my ultimate goal is to build a infrared imaging device, maybe just by scanning the, the scene one pixel at a time using this, this one pixel sensor. Unfortunately, it seems that there's no point on this board where I have access to a decent analog signal. Since all the signal processing is happening inside here, uh, I, you know, I probed around on the board and didn't really find anything analog or digital that I could actually kind of harvest. I suppose I could, you know, read the LCD pins, but that, that's not, I mean, I'm not going to do that. 
So the plan now is to desolder this from the board and hook it up to an analog devices amplifier. I found an app note on the web and uh, using a very, very low DC offset chopper type op amp. Yeah, you can amplify that millivolt signal from the sensor here and turn it into something, you know, like a couple of volts so that you can actually digitize it and then store it. Uh, inside here, there is a polyethylene lens. It's a Fresnel lens, and this is what determines how uh, small the spot size is that this thermometer measures. So this thermometer is a so-called 6 to 1, uh, meaning that the, the target size is 6 times smaller than the distance from the thermometer. The more expensive thermometers, like this one, this is a uh, 20 to 1. And what makes it a 20 to 1 is a silicon or a germanium lens that you can see in there. And the silicon or germanium produces a much higher quality lens that has a longer focal length. But it also costs more, which is the trade-off. Here's a much larger germanium lens from my previous uh, thermal imaging experiments. So I guess I'll talk a little bit about um, how some people have approached the problem of doing low-cost thermal imaging. Uh, one person built a physical scanner and mounted this one pixel thermal sensor like on, a, on an XY servo platform and then scanned the image physically, you know, pixel by pixel. And that's cool. I think the scan time was like a couple minutes or something like that. So I'm, I'm hoping to improve on that a little bit. Uh, one way to do it would be to not scan the whole device, but just to put a... Um, uh, a pair of mirrors on galvanometers and then spin those around so that the whole device doesn't have to move, just, just the light path or infrared path. Uh, another idea I had was to use a digital mirror device from a, a DLP projector and use that to scan across instead of actually physically moving something. Um, I thought that it might be faster to, uh, to use a DMD. And the other uh, benefit is that we could change the scan pattern and the pixel size by turning off more than one uh, DMD at a time. So it would look something like this. If, uh, if the one pixel sensor is here, this is that little IR window, the sensor here, and uh, our DMD device would look like this, and the lens would be here. So incoming radiation goes through the lens, gets focused down onto the DMD, and then depending which pixel is selected on the DMD, that would select which part of the image was being scanned. So I thought that would be a pretty cool use of, of technology since, you know, we'd get to control a DMD and capture the pixels and all that stuff. One problem is that the mirror size is about, I think, 1.6, no, 16 microns, I think, for a lot of DMDs. And the wavelength of light that we're changing here is about one micron. So we're gonna, I mean, there's some problems there because the size of the optic is getting close to the wavelength at which we're, uh, you know, reflecting, and, and that becomes a problem. So I don't know about this, but we'll, we'll keep the options open here. By the way, this is patented, of course, just like every other idea in the world. Uh, there were a couple other ideas out there. One company called Redshift has made a um, a different kind of thermal imager that uses a tunable filter. So this is a really thin film that changes its optical properties when its uh, temperature changes. And the, the thin film can be extremely thin, like, you know, many nanometers or, or less than one micron for sure. And it can be suspended on little, uh, the, the film can be cut up into pixels and each pixel can be thermally isolated from each other. So that's, that sounds pretty good. I contacted this company and, uh, you know, they're not doing anything. They're not selling uh, kits. They're not selling, you know, actual completed parts or anything. I have a feeling they were just getting off the ground when 2009 hit and they've basically just been dead in the water ever since. As far as I know, they're the only company that, that um, claims this technology would work. I don't know if it actually works or not. Like I say, I haven't seen actually a demo kit. Uh, the other, another option was my idea of using a thermochromic paint or a liquid crystal paint on a really thin substrate like 10 micron, you know, stretched plastic or something like that. 
And that's, I don't think that's ever going to work. I, I think the problem is that there needs to be pixels for each, for the, for the image to really look good. Uh, if, if it's a continuous film all the way across, there's just too much thermal conduction between areas on the image. All right, see you later. Bye.